Mr. Supreme, and a good friend of mine, Mr. Mike B. Anderson. Next up, consultant producer David Silverman. You just saw her if you were here a few minutes ago. Voice actress Supreme, the voice of the crazy cat lady, Mrs. Skinner, Lindsay Nagel, and about a thousand other voices, Tress McNeil. Please give a big hand to Simpsons executive producer, Mr. Al Jean. And back for more, creator of The Simpsons and my good friend, Mr. Matt Graney. Wait a minute, the last panel I got a real good cheer. <laughs> South Park, I guess. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say we are opening with a couch gag done by director Guillermo del Toro. It is a mystery Halloween show. If you brought little kids, too late. Control. I'd like to say I'd like to thank Mike Anderson, who did a lot of work on that, and Richard Sean, who cleared every single character that appeared in that legally. <laughs> So gentlemen, do we want to do questions first, or what do we have? Well, I have a little news and maybe question. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to announce, we always get asked who are the guest stars upcoming. Uh, included this year will be Kristen Wiig, Elizabeth Moss, Rachel Maddow, Zach Galifianakis, Stan Lee, Harlan Ellison, and good news everyone, there will be a Simpson Futurama crossover. either the finale this year or the premiere next year. It's going to be really good, so this is an answer. Remember I said in the last panel, to come to this panel, and you get the answer to the last question, and, and I said it may be a disappointing answer, but no, it was not. It was a good answer. That's why I'm here. I needed to know. <laughs> Everything in our lives is crossovers now. When I eat lunch with Matt, it's a crossover. <laughs> Okay, so do we have someone lined up for a question, please? Hi, my name's Jeremy, and you just made a million geek dreams come true in the crossover. <laughs> um, I hope the audience is a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, congratulations to you on the expansion of the Springfield Ride at Universal Florida. That's really awesome, really. Um, but I was, actually, I had a question about the tapped out game. Um, so I don't know if you guys can answer it, but I just wanted to know if we'll see more crossover between the episodes and the game itself, because I'm super addicted to it. Yes, you will. You'll see a lot of crossover. Uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, of, of stuff from the episodes. Um, the, the, who were the writers on this? On I know Stuart was one of the lead writers and Brian Stewart Stuart Burns, <laughs> yes. So Simpsons writers are actually writing the the uh, the gags and the and tapped out in the story and um, and it, it's a testament to how dedicated they are that they actually play the game constantly all day when they should be writing scripts. <laughs> okay, come on up and we have a, a, a reward for that wonderful question: a Duff Man costume. <laughs> Yes, next question. Wow, look at that. Hi, my name is Jason. <laughs> First of all, I'll start by saying you played a big role in my life, and it's a great show. Thank you for that. We hadn't noticed. <laughs> I want to say, um, I was wondering if you guys are planning a Simpsons movie, too. Woo! We've talked about it, but again, um, you know, we don't want to do it until we really have a great script, so there's nothing imminent that I would say is the best answer. What happened was when we did the first movie, we, it's not like we had a uh, team of animators sitting around doing nothing, uh, waiting to do a movie. So we did the movie and the TV show at the same time, and people worked as hard, or I mean twice as hard as they'd ever worked before 
for four years, and I think we're still recovering from the first movie. If we could figure out, you know, how to do it without uh, people going blind, um, we would. I'd like to add that uh, a while ago, the uh, Hollywood Reporter misquoted me, saying that it wouldn't be for another 10 or 15 years. That was a lie. I don't know where they got it up from, but uh, here I am saying at Comic-Con, Hollywood Reporter, wrong, any wrong, wrong. <laughs> and you've got a big head. <laughs> so we have for you a pair of Homer Simpson slippers to go with that wonderful hat. <laughs> Next question. Hi, my name is Josh. Thank you. Um, <laughs> how did you come up with The Simpsons? <laughs> I have 48 answers to that. Pick, pick a number. <laughs> pick a number. 48? I don't remember. <laughs> all my life. I loved cartoons growing up. Uh, this is way before almost everybody's time here, but there's a, a, a live action TV show that came out in 1960 or 61, Dennis the Menace. And Dennis the Menace, which by the way, great, 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 great comic strip by uh, Hank Ketchum. Uh, Dennis the Menace said that at the opening main title of the pilot episode, I was sitting there watching it, and Dennis the Menace comes out like a cyclone, like a uh, like Tasmanian devil. And, uh, and, and, and he had slingshot and all this stuff, and I thought, oh my gosh, a show about a menace. This is gonna be fantastic. And then the actual show was pretty sweet, pretty mild. I like it, it's great, Jane Orton's fantastic, but he never used the slingshot. And so I wanted to grow up and do a TV show where the kid actually used the slingshot. And we're still waiting all the way kids do in the 21st century. <laughs> Answer number 37. After that question, we have, for some reason, an ALF costume. <laughs> yes, you can look like ALF also. <laughs> yes, next question. Yeah, so uh, there is an ALF connection to, uh, uh, to The Simpsons. Al Number Bob. one, Al Fawson, yes. Yes, our composer was the man in the little elf suit during the, no. <laughs> he composed the theme for the elf show. And did you write? And I worked on both shows, yeah. Elf for one year, The Simpsons for 25. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Yes, sir. Oh, hi, my name is Maya. I wanted to know um, if you ever have any plans of making any one of those future episodes or where we can see Maggie actually as a kid, no longer as a baby or you know as a teenager, but as a kid. We're also doing a sequel to uh, the episode uh, "Holidays of Future Past," where you saw uh, Bart as a single father and Lisa had a troublesome kid. Uh, and in this one, Homer uh, dies and then he is cloned and he dies again and he keeps overeating and dying. So finally, they run out of clones and he's used uh, as like a hologram. In that way in the episode. Also by Stuart Burns. And what about Meg? She still doesn't talk. She goes on a date with the one eyebrow man. <laughs> so that question, we have a super sexy Duff Woman costume. look at the schedule, we see Futurama, we go, let's cross over. <laughs> but it's, you know, it comes from life mostly. It's, uh, we have a lot of writers and we have a lot of different experiences with kids. And you just try to take things that seem like they really will follow a family in this day and age and try to make stories out of them. And we have for you a pair of Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish slippers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next question. Hi, my name is Ashley, and I was just wondering, I'm, I'm sure all of your characters are like your babies, but which is your favorite to create? 
I, you know, I like Lisa a lot. I think Lisa speaks to me, I think, uh, because, and let's go down the line and pick everybody's choose their favorite character. I like Lisa because she is going to grow up and escape from Springfield. I love the cat lady. I just wish I could hear her in two, two people from now. <laughs> <laughs> And for you, we have... Wait, 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 Mine used to be Mr. Burns, but today it's Millhouse. Well, or Pam, I will say. Oh. Well, it's really great, Pam! I changed my mind. My favorite is uh, Principal Skinner's mom. Oh. You're the creator of the show here, aren't you? Well, you're not the creator of my house, and you never will be. Did you want me to tell you when it's 7 o'clock, man? Stop fighting over the inflatable bath, for God's sake. My bones are near dust. Why is Chester Lee's room? Just doing a bill. Oh, God. I got my dog. I got my dog. He's got an attitude. I think he's got, uh, I think he's got a future. Maybe he can just uh, peel himself away from that crowd. But, uh, and he's got good, good hair. <laughs> Okay, come on up and get your Kid Robot Mac Brainy official t-shirt. So come on up and get your Simpsons 15th season DVD, and then we'll take the last oh. question. <laughs> Next question, please. Yeah. Hi, my name is Richard, and I'm from Canada. And my question is, what is your favorite prank call in the entire series? I think my little one say, I'm P.O. Prava. I have a P.O. You sure do! What you did just did is my favorite for me. All right, on that note, we'd like to introduce uh, this group. We put the Spring in Springfield that is the music of The Simpsons. Yeah, please welcome Will Larsh, Anthony Napolitano, Douglas Goodhart, and Shannon Emery. Don't forget his prize. Oh, sorry, what? Just a sec. Uh, for that question, we have a Gene Simmons kiss costume. It's incredibly heavy, no for itself. <laughs> Me, my name is Lars. Stevie Mom, who's there is Lars. 
Now I would like to see a Broadway show from the back. <laughs> we have more prizes to give out, so let's do a few more questions. And they, and they will come back at the end of the show. Yes, go ahead, next question. Hello, g'day guys, I came all the way from Australia for this panel, so I'm pretty pumped. Um, so I feel like, uh, Matt, with your work, one of the things that makes it very different from other animations is how heartfelt it is. I think of like Homer City on the car, when his mum leaves, or Fry's dog waiting and dying for him, which made me cry, and I'm a grown man. And I wonder if that's something that you actually wanted to put into your animation, or if it just naturally occurs in the writer's room. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you've got to put in the emotion in the script at the very beginning because no one wants to pitch uh, moments of heartfelt emotion later. It's hard to shoot. So you've got to get in at, at the beginning. As far as killing Fry's dog, I know, I agree. I agree. I fought it. I fought it. David Cohen and I had a big, we had a big fist fight. And, uh, no, we, 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 it was an experiment. And that no one has ever forgotten. So it turns out that if you kill a dog, uh, people cry. <laughs> so, but you know, it, we brought the dog back to life a number of times on the show. So we tried to, tried to make up for that one horrible <laughs> episode where. Now, now, if you remember, for those of you who don't know the show, the Fry's dog is waiting back, uh, back in our time for Fry, and. We depicted him, I'm going to cry, just telling the story. He's sitting there waiting for Fry to come, but the seasons pass and he doesn't move. So that was supposed to indicate that it's a cartoon and it's not real. <laughs> but people still cry. I, I don't think I can go on with this panel. Well, also, we killed Snowball, too. Man. <laughs> Springfield Isotopes Baseball. Hey guys. Um, so I love the show and I especially love the music. So my question is perfect for today's panel. Um, I was wondering if there's going to be any future episodes that's fully musical or even kind of operatic. We have one that's just in, in the works that will be very musical. I can't really tell you much more about it than that, but yep. Please come up and receive probably the worst smelling cologne ever, Jughead brand. <laughs> cologne for men. Because we have a lot of things, we can do a few more questions, but let me roll our second clip first. Really quickly, um, Homer helps a woman voiced by Elizabeth Moss give birth on an elevator, and she's so grateful that she names the boy Homer Jr. Uh, Marge is in Israel. Here's a little clip. <laughs> Wendy Woods, and I'm from Springfield, Oregon, and I was wondering what was the reasoning behind the contest with the movie for the Springfields? To try to make more people go see the movie. <laughs> well, we, had, we, had a, we had a contest uh, to pick the official Springfield, and uh, and, and various towns submitted videos, and uh, Springfield, Vermont won. Fair and square. And uh, so that was the official Springfield for 2007. <laughs> <laughs> and we have for you but a... Springfield, Oregon could, for the next movie, maybe. Yeah. Gotta try. <laughs> There's gonna be a next movie? <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen years. <laughs> you don't say that. I got it wrong once. Come on up and get your Krusty Land T-shirt. Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Frank Jordan, and I uh, love The Simpsons. Greatest show ever. Uh, what did you guys think of the South Park episode The Simpsons did at first? <laughs> Under the dome, they got the Simpsons they did first. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we did it. A lot of manuscript 
were sitting around too that I guess I uh, suddenly discovered when they turned into movies. <laughs> yeah, you know, Stephen King really doesn't have very many ideas. <laughs> and we have never ripped him off. <laughs> and we have for you a Homer Simpson costume. Woo! Donut not included. <laughs> Yes, next question. Uh, yeah, um, my name is Allie, and I'm a growing up in San Diego watching the show. By the way, I loved it growing up. And uh, my question is, uh, what's your most favorite Bar Simpson prank? Well, I like the one where he got a bunch of bullhorns uh, together and, and put them all in a row and then shouted through the first one, and somehow. Uh, it, it caused a uh, sonic boom. <laughs> I like, and this is, I think, inspired by something in your life, Matt, where he unloosed all the screws in the school, and uh, I thought, that is a lot of work for a prank. <laughs> <laughs> the reward of the work is not really high. No, that's not quite true. I mean, well, I never unscrewed the screws in my school, but there were... <laughs> There were some kids who uh, Jimbo Dolphin Kearney are modeled after, and they did. And so doors would fall down. Aww. And, uh, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. I was going to say, I like when Bart uh, took a can of beer for Homer and just shook it and shook it and shook it and shook it. And shook it. Especially when he took it to the uh, eight store. <laughs> Good prank. He does an amazing prank in the new Halloween show that I can't tell you what it is. Ooh, you have to watch. Trust you, Emma. You know, in the first uh, episode where um, Mrs. Skinner, Hackett Skinner, appears, uh, she's there at the school, and um, Bart uh, flushes a cherry bomb down, down the toilet, and um, she can't believe that that sweet Simpson boy would do such a thing. She was very nice there. She got over it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not really a Bart prank, but I got to say, in the in the uh, Guillermo del Toro uh, 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 couch gag uh, extended title sequence for the Halloween episode, I think Maggie running Millhouse off the bridge was pretty <laughs> pretty good. I like that. Poor Millhouse. <laughs> Do we have it, a what prize? This will go great with your hat. It's a Quickie Mart t-shirt. Over yeah. 24 hours, never closes. Yeah. Come on up and get that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, next question. Please. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. And by the way, thank you for the homework drawing. And my question is, are you ever going to do an opposites episode where each character is acting like the opposite of themselves? That is a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've been planning that yes. for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen <and> Stephen King. <laughs> Just come up and sign something. I mean, get your gift. <laughs> Something is prize or acknowledging we are the owners of that idea. <laughs> Anyone else have some ideas? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on up and receive a uh, prize that's probably twice as big as you are. A crusty, full-size, life-size candy. One more question. Hi, uh, my name is Darren Obergum, and my question is, why do they have special names in the Halloween episodes? <laughs> that is based on, um, I think it was originally EC Comics. We do that with the writers and artists, and my favorite was Oozing Joe Orlando. Then when I was a kid, Marvel Comics did it, like uh, Johnny Jack Kirby or Smiling Steve Ditko. So I just thought, hey, why don't we do it too? And then I didn't realize that we'd make these huge blurry credits over the first segment of every Halloween show. From then on. And then we'd have to think of 20 different macabre names for ourselves. That's the truth. 
Funny, huh? That's kind of really funny. That's happening. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're a boxer's man, but we have for you two pairs of uh -huh. Homer Simpson's boxer shorts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. We're going to bring back, uh, we put the spring in Springfield. Matt, any last words? Hi, Corumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Please enjoy. Thank you.
rails, wacky snakes, monorails. Cloud horns be such a bop, steps on rings. Jesus, get yourself a tummy, Mars not proud, Homer shubby. Homer worries, part is gay, Pooch, you two, and R.A. Hippies, baby, such a pan, I'm cutlets, and Mars boy man. Mars murmurs, mod tropes, Lisa Moon has Homer toes. Snacky blues, birds away, what else do I have to say? You'll never stop the Simpsons. Have no fears, think I'm sorry for years.
to come to this panel and you get the answer to the last question and, and I said it may be a disappointing answer, but no it was not! It was a good answer. That's why I'm here, I needed to know. Everything in our lives is crossovers now. When I eat lunch with Nan, it's a crossover. <laughs> okay, so do we have someone lined up for a question, please? Hi, my name's Jeremy. And you just made a million geek dreams come true in the crossover. <laughs> um, I hope the audience is a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, congratulations, too, on the expansion of the Springfield ride at Universal Florida. That's really awesome, really. Um, but I was, actually, I had a question about the tapped out game. Um, so I don't know if you guys can answer it. But I just wanted to know if we'll see more crossover between the episodes and the game itself. Because I'm super addicted to it. Yes, you will. You'll see a lot of crossover. Uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, of, of stuff from the episodes. Um, the, the, who were the writers on this? I know Stuart was one of the lead writers. And Brian Stuart Burns, yes. So Simpsons writers are actually writing the, the, uh, the gags and the and tapped out in the story. And, um, and it's a testament to how dedicated they are that they actually play the game constantly, all day, when they should be writing scripts. <laughs> okay, come on up, and we have a, a, a reward for that wonderful question, a Duffman costume. <laughs> uh, yes, next question. Wow, look at that. Hi, my name is Jason. <laughs> We hadn't noticed. <laughs> I want to say, uh, I was wondering if you guys are planning a Simpsons movie too. Woo! We've talked about it, but again, um, you know, we don't want to do it until we really have a great script, so there's nothing imminent I would say is the best answer. What happened was when we did the first movie, we, it's not like we had a uh, team of animators sitting around doing nothing. Uh, waiting to do a movie. <laughs> yes, you can look like Alf Lawson. <laughs> yes, next question. Yeah, so uh, there is an Alf connection to, uh, uh, to The Simpsons. Alf Number Alf. one. Alf Lawson, yes. Yes, our composer was the man in the little Alf suit during the... No, <laughs> he composed the theme for the Alf show. And did you write... And I worked on both shows, yeah. Alf for one year, The Simpsons for 25. <laughs> Next question. Yes, sir. Oh, hi, my name is Maya. I wanted to know um, if you ever have any plans of making any one of those future episodes or where we can see Maggie actually as a kid, no longer as a baby or, you know, as a teenager, but as a kid. We're also doing a sequel to uh, the episode, uh, Holidays of Future Past where you saw uh, Bart as a single father and Lisa had a troublesome kid. Uh, and in this one, Homer uh, dies and then he is cloned and he dies again and he keeps overeating and dying. So finally they run out of clones and he's used uh, as like a hologram and it appears in that way in the episode. Also by Stuart Burns. And what about Meg? She still doesn't talk. She goes on a date with the one eyebrow man. <laughs> So that question, we have a super sexy Duff Woman costume. Oh yeah. Hi, I'm Hannah, and this question is actually for my boyfriend. He's the one who wanted to ask, but he's too shy. Uh, he wants to know how do you come up with fresh ideas after 25 years? Well, um, we just look at the schedule. We see Futurama. We go, let's cross over. <laughs> but it's, you know, it comes from life mostly. It's, uh, we have a lot of writers and we have a lot of different experiences. We have kids and you just try to take things that seem like they really will follow family in this day and age and try to make stories out of them. And we have for you a pair of Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish slippers. Wow. <laughs> Yes, next question. Hi, my name So we did the movie and the TV show at the same time, and people worked as hard, or I mean twice as hard as they'd ever worked before 
for four years, and I think we're still recovering from the first movie. If we could figure out, you know, how to do it without uh, people going blind, um, we would. I'd like to add that uh, a while ago, the uh, a Hollywood Reporter misquoted me, saying that it wouldn't be for another 10 or 15 years. That was a lie. I don't know where they got it up from, but uh, here I am saying at Comic-Con, Hollywood Reporter, wrong, any wrong, wrong. <laughs> And you've got a big head. <laughs> so we have for you a pair of Homer Simpson slippers to go with that wonderful hat. Oh, yeah. Yes, next question. Hi, my name is Josh. Thank you. Um, <laughs> how did you come up with The Simpsons? <laughs> I have 40 eight answers to that. Pick, pick a number. Pick a number. 48? I don't remember. Uh, no, I've been, a, I've been a, uh, a cartoonist all my life. I loved cartoons growing up. Uh, this is way before almost everybody's time here, but there's a, a, a live action TV show that came out in 1960 or 61, Dennis the Menace. And Dennis the Menace, which by the way, great, 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 great comic strip by uh, Hank Ketchum. Uh, Dennis the Menace said that in the opening main title of the pilot episode, I was sitting there watching it, and Dennis the Menace comes out like a cyclone, like a uh, like Tasmanian devil. And, uh, and, and, and he had slingshot and all this stuff, and I thought, oh my gosh, a show about a menace. This is going to be fantastic. And then the actual show was pretty... Sweet, pretty mild. I like it, it's great. Jay Norton is fantastic, but he never used the slingshot. And so I wanted to grow up and do a TV show where the kid actually used the slingshot. And we're still waiting all the way kids do in the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> Answer number 37. After that question, we have for some reason an ALF costume. <laughs> Supreme and a good friend of mine, Mr. Mike B. Anderson. Next up, consultant producer David Silverman. You just saw her if you were here a few minutes ago. Voice actress Supreme, the voice of the crazy cat lady, Mrs. Skinner, Lindsay Nagel, and about a thousand other voices, Tress McGill. Please give a big hand to Simpsons executive producer, Mr. Al G. And back for more, creator of The Simpsons and my good friend, Mr. Matt Graney. Wait a minute, the last panel I got a real good cheer. <laughs> South Park, I guess. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say we are opening with a couch gag done by director Guillermo del Toro. It is a mystery Halloween show. If you brought little kids, too late. Control. Let me just say that I'd like to thank Mike Anderson, who did a lot of work on that, and Richard Chung, who cleared every single character that appeared in that legally. <laughs> So, gentlemen, do we want to do questions first, or what do we have? Well, I have a little news and maybe question. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to announce, we always get asked who are the guest stars upcoming. Uh, included this year will be Kristen Wiig, Elizabeth Moss, Rachel Maddow, Zach Galifianakis, Stan Lee, Harlan Ellison, and good news, everyone, there will be a Simpson Futurama crossover. either the finale this year or the premiere next year. Woo! It's good. 